Welcome friends to another r slash malicious compliance video. As always, if you enjoy this video, please make sure to hit that subscribe button. Our first story of the day is by Astrolegium. You can't use an accent. Reading through the responses on my post from yesterday, I was reminded of another instance of malicious compliance from my days at Ticket Nation. After you've taken a couple hundred calls, a week or two of work really, it can get boring and boredom leads to finding ways to entertain yourself. One of my coworkers decided that he was going to entertain himself by putting on an accent to see how the customers reacted. While I admit he chose poorly, he decided to imitate an Indian accent and started taking calls. He was loving it. After a call or two, however, his team lead overheard him and asked what he was doing and told him to stop. The next day, an email was sent out forbidding us from using anything other than our natural accents while we were on the phone. Now, I was living in South Texas at the time and have a fairly average American accent with a bit of Texan mixed in, but I have family in East Texas and Central and North Arkansas and when I was little I spoke like them and so I had an idea. The next day, my opening went from, thank you for calling Ticket Nation customer service, this is OP, how may I help you today, to Thank you for calling Ticket Nation customer service. This is OP. How can I help you today? Needless to say, I was quickly noticed and pulled off the phones by my team lead. He asked me if I had read the email, which I confirmed, and he went on to ask why, if I had read the email, I was using an accent. The look of utter confusion on his face when I told him, I'm not, was priceless. After a bit of back and forth, I told them that I was raised speaking like I had been on those calls, and that the accent that they were used to hearing me take calls was, in fact, not my natural accent. And since I didn't want to get written up, I had complied by reverting to the one that was. He wasn't sure how to respond at first, and even went to speak with a manager above him, but kept me off the phones while they figured out how they wanted to proceed. A few minutes later they came back and told me that they wanted me to go back to my professional accent, but I told them it would be setting a bad example to the rest of the team since we don't want anyone using an accent that isn't their natural accent either. They were stumped on how to proceed and sent me back to the phones. I continued to take calls with my natural accent after that, and a few of my peers started noticing and a few of them even joined in by abandoning their Americanized accents in favor of their native Mexican accents. It was glorious. In the end, management decided to roll back the rule and only asked us to keep in one accent throughout the call and did not use an accent that's derogatory or demeaning. I went back to my normal accent and my teammate went back to using a different accent on each call. Thinking back on it, I should have invited him to my D&D group. He would have made a great dungeon master. So in this event, if you noticed a coworker faking an Indian accent just for the laughs of it, do you think it's worth telling them to knock it off or would you just kind of turn the other cheek? Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. This next story is by Smoke1. Sorry boss, I can't come back in, I've been drinking. A few years ago, my wife was working as an EMS worker in our local township. She got home from work one night after a long day and posted a picture of herself holding an unopened beer and saying, I needed this. In the picture you could tell the beer was still closed. A few minutes after she posted her picture, a major storm decided to suddenly roll through. My wife, being the good employee she was, called her supervisor and asked if he needed any help. He said, no, you can't come in, you posted a picture of yourself drinking alcohol. She objected that the can wasn't open, and every idiot could see that, but he wouldn't relent and he said something about how it could be construed wrong. Fast forward a couple of weeks, it's been a stupidly busy day for her, and when she finally got home, she ran over to that shelf that we had a bottle of whiskey on, literally tossed me her phone and said, quick, take a picture of me drinking this. The cap was obviously still on the bottle, but she tipped it up like she was drinking it and posted it online as soon as I gave the phone back. Her boss called her 10 minutes later and said, we need you to come back in, we're short staffed tonight. She said, sorry boss, I can't. I've been drinking, check online. He tried to object that the cap was on and she said, last time I posted a picture like this, you wouldn't let me come in because it would set the wrong precedent. I wouldn't want to do that to you this time. I definitely think the manager messed up here. By denying OP the ability to come back in when they weren't drinking, they clued them in that there's an ability to prevent ever having to come back in for extra work as long as you pretend to drink. Shoot, at this point, anytime they want the night off guaranteed, they're gonna start posting a lot more social media pictures of, well, drinking alcohol. This next story is by Griselda Loves Cats. Hate to be late? 
expect your kids to use it against you. My father hates being late. He will not go to a movie if the previews have started. He was never late to work without some catastrophe happening. As kids, my brother and I hated going to mass. It was boring. We got yelled at for fidgeting. We were in Catholic school, so we already had to go to mass once a week. Why did we have to go a second time? My brother and I fought often as children. We were united in our distaste for mass. Our parents split the weekends. They weren't divorced. Mom got up with us on Saturday mornings, and Dad was in charge of Sunday mornings. My father is not a morning person, not even a little bit. He was in charge of making us get ready for Mass. The only time my parents could almost guarantee we wouldn't be fighting was Sunday morning. If we had to fight over something, we would sneak outside and do it in the far back of the yard so Dad wouldn't wake up. Dad was always ranting to us about the evils of being late to things so we learned to be very quiet on Sunday morning until 11.15. We let Dad sleep until at least then. Because being late is so horrible, we ended up not going to Mass even half the time. Because Dad was never going to walk into the church if the first hymn had started. I think what's odd to me is somebody that hates to be late doesn't have anything to make sure that they aren't late. Why would they ever be able to sleep in until 11.15 rather than just have an alarm clock that goes off at 10.30? So they'll always be on time. Our next story is by White Chaos Drake. So you want me to be in the selling area till I'm scheduled? If you say so. In my workplace, I'm scheduled to work from 8 o'clock to 4.30. Lunch is 30 minutes and it doesn't count towards my work time. However, you have to be in the building during the lunch. You're also allowed to take a total of 30 minute breaks, however you please, as long as you stay in the building. Some details, there's a camera near the department information booth, since there's a lot of documents you usually have to sign. Each department has their own information booth. So it was around 4pm on the clock and I said to my mentor that I'm going on lunch and home after that. My mentor, Vladimir, did not like that. His answer was, you have to be here the whole time you're put in the schedule. I say, I know I have to be in the building, but I don't have to be in the selling area when I'm taking my break. Vladimir says, no, you have to be here the whole time you're on the schedule, but it's your personal problem, so do what the insert Russian swear words you want, just solve it. I say, okay, if you say so. So I sat down and didn't do anything for 30 minutes straight, then went home. I came to work today, took all my breaks in the selling area, and if a customer asked me, I told them I'm on a break. Go ask Vladimir. He wears such and such. Vladimir walks in on me just sitting there, doing nothing, shrugs and walks away. This happens twice. When it happens the second time, he asks, why are you sitting all the time? I say, well, you did tell me that I have to be in the selling area even during my breaks. He says, I didn't say that. I said, you did. And if you want proof, go ask the security pointing at the camera. Vladimir says, fine, I'll go ask. He came back defeated with a sorrow face saying, don't ever pull that stunt again. I say, by the way, did you have a lot of people in the line today? Vladimir says, that was you? I say, no, just checking. I didn't see a single soul. His face went from sour to bittersweet laughter, saying, remind me to step back when I'm about to make my day a whole lot worse. I say, I would, but last time you said, it's not my problem. So, it isn't my problem, but I do hope we're cool. He says, no, we're okay. I just hope I don't piss you off next time. This, by the way, is my second week on the job. So, yeah, I think I already like this place. OP wrote, you're allowed to take a total of 30 minute breaks however you please. And I know it's just the, like, language translation coming into effect, but I'm imagining somebody taking 31 minute breaks. You work on the shift for about 10 minutes and you're like, it's about time for another one minute break. I imagine that would be one way to annoy your manager. And our final story of the day is by Feralinks. No, it's hardware. Backstory, I'm a service engineer for a business appliance, ATM, self-checkout and others type company, as stated in other stories. In most of our contracts, normal wear and tear parts are covered. However, if a customer asks for them to be replaced or insists it's a physical issue, it's not covered and they pay $150 plus an hour and for the parts. I won't go into extreme detail. However, the issue arose with the cash resupply people not following the program sheet to refill the machine and entering the wrong information. Main story. I went out to a machine that's normally pretty quiet. Not many issues and is well maintained by on-site staff. 
I went over the hardware slowly, enjoying the AC as I couldn't fathom quickly returning to the heat of the southern sun. After verifying the hardware was good and checking the software and found no issues, I called the customer to ask what they see, when the issue started and what's been happening. I'm given a short history and asked to re-enter the cash amounts. I follow along and to no avail, the machine is still not working. I'm now three hours into a call where I normally take an hour, including drive time. No clue what's going on, I copy the log files and email them to our engineer support team and call the customer call center when the following conversation takes place. I say, hi, this is OP calling about machine number. I've copied the logs and had engineering support looking at them and I'll return when they review them. Customer rep says, wait, why are you looking at logs? Who said you can copy them? I say we don't require approval to export log files as we're the servicing provider. The customer rep says, well I'm looking at this machine and it's showing the hardware is faulted. Maybe instead of letting you level 1 people take such an advanced task, you should contact your level 2. I say thanks, so to clarify, you want a level 2 to do what exactly? I'm asking as the team senior level 2. Customer rep says, you need to contact a better level 2 and replace any parts that affect this issue. The entire dispenser is faulted. I say, okay, customer rep. You know where this is going, right? On hand, I had 8 parts I could replace, but I called everyone on my team. I wanted every part for this older machine we had available. I then filed a form that allows us to receive parts of the billing as a bonus and I replaced individual parts from wiring to control boards for over 10 hours. Patched software, new parts, the bill had to be pretty high at this point, and the issue persists. I had the logs reviewed and got back that the cash resupply team input the wrong type of cash. It should be $10 and they entered it as $50. I called back in and not surprised, it was the same rep as last time. I informed him of what was found in the logs and asked him to force the correct type from his side. He put me on hold for 15 minutes and was asking in an irritating tone, you need to fix the hardware. I informed him the entire unit was new, the software updated and he needs to do as I ask. He insisted again that the dispenser had a hardware fault. So I hung up and called back, getting someone in another country and I asked him to check. Not surprising, he said there's no history of hardware issues in a week. I took to repeating my request, and within a few minutes the machine was working just fine. I got an email from someone in the billing department asking me to contact them immediately. We went over what was asked and said. After some time, they told me that the account manager will not approve billing this call. So I called my boss and was asked to mute my phone. My boss patched the account manager into the call and asked him why he won't bill the call. The manager said, why do you think my area needs to absorb the cost of this repair? The account manager says, your engineer was rude and replaced too many parts. Manager says, do you have proof? Account manager says, the rep sent an email. My manager says, with proof of him being rude? The account manager says, I trust my customer reps, we don't need proof. I've already sent an email to HR for dismissal. I could physically feel my manager's anger. The line disconnected and I got a call from my boss's boss a few hours later to ask about the events leading to the end of the service ticket. The customer rep call center was billed almost 80,000. As their customer, the bank, who owned this machine, billed for time out of service to both the call center and the cash resupply agency. I had a bonus today over my usual 80 hour plus 40 hours overtime usual paycheck. Also, that account manager's email is now grey in my inbox, so I'm sure he was let go for some odd reason. I mean, I think this all just kind of boils down to the fact that they were incapable of correctly doing their job. This isn't an issue of somebody being rude to somebody else. And to be clear, the customer rep was rude well before OP was ever remotely crossing into rude territory, but they stood their ground and demanded that there was a hardware issue when OP was complying with them and fixing every possible hardware and software issue it could have been. Literally nobody else to blame other than that customer rep. 
But with that being said, that's a wrap on another bunch of stories here today. As always, if you guys have any favorite videos of this bunch, let me know which one in the comments down below and why. And if you enjoyed the stories in general, if you could subscribe to this channel, it'd mean a lot to me. I make these videos daily, and it's by far and away the best way to support my channel. So no matter what you did, whether it was subscribing or liking, leaving a comment, I just appreciate the heck out of you guys. And as always, I'll be back tomorrow with even more stories right here on the Storytime channel.